And now I am going to invite um, Mike Flood up to the podium. And uh, Mike has been working uh, for the past year on an initiative, a regional initiative in Northeast Nebraska. Well, thank you very much. Uh, when Dana and Terry called, they told me that uh, they wanted to do something in Northeast Nebraska, and they asked if I would put together a group of people and uh, provide a roadmap for Northeast Nebraska's future. And uh, what I appreciated about that the most is they asked us to tell them what we thought was going to work. And uh, then I heard Moens Bai speak at our first meeting, and he said, Nebraska and its philanthropic community, we don't have a money problem, we have a leadership problem. We need people across the state to stand up and tell us where we can go. And transformation is not comfortable. It is difficult, it is hard, it is, it is asking people to do more than they think that they can do, and not just the people in Omaha, but the people in Norfolk and the people across the state. I have a number of people that are on this group and steering committee for the Northeast Initiative. If you gave your time, any time, which is hundreds of hours, would you please stand up so that we can recognize you? As you can see, it's an impressive number of people from across the state, and I appreciate you making uh, the five or six hour trip. You know, we have these two lane roads to Norfolk, so we had to follow the chicken truck to get down here. <laughs> But we're working on that. Um, we call our effort Growing Together. And uh, it's growing together because it's growing the Battle Creeks and the Norfolks and the Pierces and the Waynes together. And oftentimes, it is easy to feel left out when you're in a rural area. And what I appreciate about having been in the legislature is I know there are people in this community that understand that Nebraska's success in the next 50 years depends on a strong Norfolk, a strong Tilden, a Columbus that's thriving. Because when we stop growing on the fish hook, it all filters back to you. And it's, it's happening right now. What I'm showing you here is the net migration table from Madison County from 2000 to 2010. I was the state senator during many of these years, and I can tell you every time we went out and raised money to build new parks or recreational facilities or community center, we said, would you please give a million dollars, Elkhorn Valley Bank? We need that money because we have to keep our kids here. And as you look at the outcome of that decade, it didn't work. I mean, it worked if you're 70 plus, which is fine. Those are folks on the farm that are moving back into town. We've got nursing homes and we've got nice homes and we're closer. We've got a handy bus. But if you're 20 to 34, it's not working. And I can tell you what, if you think these numbers are bad, you should see the numbers in Pierce County. You should see what's happening in Knox and Cedar County. The Norfolks of the world are just surviving with an average increase of 31 people a year. And we look around and we think we're thriving. But when you look at people in Pierce, Nebraska, they look around and they're not seeing people come back. And yes, they go to Omaha, but they go to Des Moines. They go to, they go to Omaha and they figure out they can make more money in Dallas and they're gone. And so our challenge is to make this right. I'm as much a part of this as anybody is. We were all a part of this. But that's not a winning strategy because every year you lose 17% of a five-year age range. It's a 40-year problem. And let me tell you, being single in Norfolk at 24, and I was, you have to be a major extrovert and you've got to really like country dancing. Um, <laughs> and I, I nailed it and married right out of Columbus. But, uh, but it's, you know, I have people that work for me and I'm trying to bring these kids in from across the nation to serve on a statewide network and they're 23 years old and they love every second of their job at News Channel Nebraska until 6 o'clock on a Friday night. And then it's them at Mel's Bar with 40-year-old divorcees. I'm, I'm just telling you the facts. Like, these are the facts. This is about biology. This is about the fact that when you were 24 and it was 6 o'clock on a Friday night, you weren't thinking about Mel's drive-in bar on East Norfolk Avenue. You were thinking about, am I going to get married someday? Am I going to see people in my age range that are the opposite sex or now the similar sex? It doesn't matter. It's... It's a challenge. And this is the facts. This is what's happening to the counties around Norfolk. This is the high school enrollment of uh, all these counties to the north of Norfolk. 
And the difference between Norfolk and uh, Omaha is that we have 30 counties that rely on us. When you look at your metro area, it's Dodge, Sarpy, Washington, you know, you might throw in Cass, uh, Saunders, but when you look at Norfolk, people come to see their lawyer from Valentine, it's three and a half hours. And so we feed all these different areas with services and we want them to grow. And when you're losing, you know, 25 to 40% of your high school enrollment over a 20 year period, Norfolk, you know, Pierce is emptying out, Tilden's emptying out, Norfolk's stable, but in 2023, we start emptying out. And the news for you is the same thing starts happening in Omaha later in the decade. And it gets worse. This is the impact of automation on American industry. This is from McKinsey. I know the Invest Nebraska or the uh, Blueprint Nebraska effort really relied a lot on McKinsey. And look at the industries. These are the jobs that are going to be impacted by automation. And, and ironically, I live in Madison County. The top five industries that are going to be impacted by automation happen to be our top five industries in Madison County. And let me put some names to those businesses. Food services. We have a pork plant in Madison, 2,000 low-skill, low-wage jobs. We might have 400 people working there in 2030 because Tyson Foods is going to figure out how to kill the pig, harvest the meat, get rid of the carcass, package the pork, and out the back door. And we're going to be looking at ourselves in 2030 saying, where did those 1,600 people go? Manufacturing, Nucor Steel's already doing it. They're not used to be you could grow up big and strong in Battle Creek and you could make $100,000. They need software engineers now that run the machines that move the hot molten steel down the line more than they need the brawn that came out of these smaller communities. Warehousing, Affiliated Foods Midwest. We're a distribution center, 800 people work there. Jeff Bezos has figured out how to run a distribution center with 100 people, high paid 100 people instead of 800 people. Uh, retail, go to Walmart and tell me what you see. <laughs> Check yourself out, by the way. Um, and agriculture, if anybody knows the impact of, of technology on agriculture, it's us. Used to be you had five people working on a farm, farm you know, three hired men, maybe your son and you. Now it's you and your part-time son, and he's got a job at Nucor in town, and you've got these machines that drive themselves. I rode in a combine earlier this year with uh, John Dittrick, and uh, even though he was a good driver, we were running it automated most of the time because he was really bending my ear about property taxes the entire time. <laughs> but the point is, in 2030, this is not going to get better. And uh, you, can, you can wrap your arms around it as much as you want, uh, but we have to deal in facts. And we are very good in Nebraska about putting a smile on a bad day. We have to deal with the fact that it's not working and it's not going to work. But it, let me tell you what does work. I sent a reporter up to Hardington to cover this story and, uh, and we had a 4-H meeting in Hardington and the 4-H group nationally did a study and they said let's figure out where the most social mobility is in America. And social mobility is the ability to grow up poor and to die in a different uh, bracket. Maybe you're in a high income area. And if you're in the American Southeast, the reality is if you're poor, that's not likely going to change according to the data. If you're in one of those white counties, there's not enough people to count. But if you're in a dark blue county, you are socially mobile. Here's what got my attention. Of all the counties in America, Cedar and Knox County are the most socially mobile counties at the very tip of the spear. They're north of Norfolk. I think about these counties and I think good people, beer drinkers, good, good fun, hardworking, but declining population. And the reality is that they have something like we all have in rural Nebraska. And I would argue this is something that Battle Creek has that maybe Norfolk doesn't have. It's something that Tilden has that, I, that Omaha doesn't have. And that's the fact that if you go to a school with 175 kids, there's a 90% chance you're going to be in an extracurricular activity. That if you win a ribbon at the Cedar County Fair, you're going to be on the front page of the newspaper. And you're going to have this confidence that you don't get in places like Norfolk or Omaha because somebody down the street outside of the school said you're good at something. We talk to our kids about early career pathways. In fact, we're so good at it, we tell them you have to get out of here to be successful. I mean, that's something we have to change. We build life skills, 4-H, FFA. 
We tell them how to, ex you know, if you want to be a mortician, you can be doing embalming at nine with a local mortician. I mean, it's not hard to get a job. But the thing I really want to drive home, if you were a senior at Wisner Pilger High School this May, think about your last 10 years. In 2008, it was the financial crisis that crippled the, the markets. Everybody paid attention. In 2013, twin tornadoes took out an entire town in your school district. Three people died. Thousands of livestock died. Your house is gone. You're living in, you know, in Wisner or Norfolk, or maybe you had to move to Omaha uh, for a while. Uh, the reality is commodity prices were low. Oh, and by the way, right before you graduate, there was a 500-year flood where mom and dad were filling sandbags and everybody was staying at your house because they couldn't cross the bridge. You can't make that up. I mean, when they're 85, they're going to look back and that's their Great Depression. And aside from ACT scores, we teach something even more important. If you grew up in Wisner Pilger or in Battle Creek or in any of these towns, you have grit, tenacity, perseverance, and resilience. And those, I would argue, more than ACT scores are going to make you a commodity in the workforce in the 21st century more than any other set of skills. And that So I don't have much time, but I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna take as much time as I need to tell you this plan. Because I want people in this audience to leave this room and help us fund it. Because it needs to happen in Norfolk, it needs to happen in every other town in this state that's a similar size and in a region. What we are gonna do in, in Norfolk is we're gonna take our downtown. I can't control much outside of the three by seven block area, and neither can the people in our group. But we're going to move our businesses into that three by seven block area in downtown Norfolk. I have 60 people, uh, you know, Brandon Day has 55, uh, Premier Senior Marketing has 150. They could have 400, but they couldn't hire enough people. Uh, we all rely on young people. We're going to get to 1,000 workers under the age of 32, and we're going to pack us in like sardines, like you do in the hay market, or like they do in, uh, in downtown Omaha, so that when that 23-year-old walks out of my business at 6 o'clock on a Friday, there's a chance he may intersect with a 24-year-old female from Premier Senior Marketing, and we're going to be deliberate about social proximity. <laughs> this, I'm, I'm not kidding you one bit. Like, We've already spent $3.1 million of our community foundation to buy the real estate to do this. And we need you know, some more to get there, and we will. Next, we're not going to move UNL or Wayne State or UNO to downtown Norfolk, but we want those kids in their senior year, we want them in co-op scholarships. They do three years at their college, they do one year at a business in downtown Norfolk, they live in downtown Norfolk, they get credit in downtown Norfolk, we will pay them for that year, they'll work 40 hours. So at the end of that year, one of these 75 kids may have a girlfriend. God forbid they like each other and they're each in different jobs and it's time to get done with school and they both say, you know what, we like it here. You've got a job, I've got a job. We have to create something that Norfolk is not. Third, founders. We need Invest Nebraska to come in with the right kind of venture capital because that kid in Tilden that, that learns in the machine shed, he's an innovator. On Sunday, during harvest, when Dinkle Implement is closed, he and his dad are figuring out what they're going to do to keep the harvest going after the, the hook breaks down on the back of the truck. You can tell I'm not a farmer. Um, <laughs> fourth is the arts. We have to be more inclusive in rural Nebraska. Yes, I'm a Republican. A lot of us are Republicans, but not every 23-year-old is a Republican. And if they want to live in downtown Norfolk, we have to be familiar with the arts. We have to be open to their preferences, whether it's sexual or it's uh, their preferences with, you know, their politics. And arts in Utah, let me tell you, the governor, the Republican governor of Utah, they showcase the arts and it drives business innovation because it taps into creativity. And then our community college is standing at the ready to help us retrain people in tech jobs. And there are four things that I want to do and then I got one more slide and you're done with me. But We've got to build housing downtown. Those young people have to live downtown. We have to promote, promote, promote. You know, we are a media hub of our own doing and making in Northeast Nebraska, and we can do that. We are spending $30 million to, to create a river walk with the state's only controlled stream through a city of our size. And let me, let me hit this point home. If Battle Creek's contribution to America were ever to be assessed, 
Some would say it would be the, the workers that they produce. The reality is that Battle Creek's contribution to America and to this state and to Madison County is the fact that they raise the gold in towns like Battle Creek. The kids that come out of Battle Creek go on to be the second in command at Verizon or the, the CEO of a company in Atlanta. And they do it because of all the reasons we talked about with social mobility. I want to see early childhood, and we all do, we want to see early childhood education in every town the size of Battle Creek, and it should be free. It should be birth to five. Because we have, yeah. And I'm not even, I'm not even pushing it for the educational aspect. I'm pushing it for the economic development aspect. Because we have two things there. We have the safest place. If you're, if you're married and you and your husband live in Des Moines and you're 27, you've got this cute two-year-old or maybe a one-year-old, uh, we have two secret weapons. One, it's safe in Battle Creek. Two, we've got grandma and grandpa and Des Moines doesn't. And as long as we have those two things and we have certified credentialed early childhood education, we can't be beat. This is the future of Norfolk. This is what it needs to be in 2030. We need your help to get there, and we look forward to being part of this. And again, to Sandra and everybody on our crew, thank you.